the socialism or Marxism. That, that, that was state capitalism and was terribly oppressive and was disgusting. <coughs> anyway. Sure, yeah. we're not talking about Marxist theory in general. He wants a dictatorship of the proletariat. He calls for a lot of authoritarianism. What, 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 I don't want to use the political we'll talk, we'll talk. Um, I want to... David Graeber, who's a anarchist anthropologist, uh, provide, I read his book called uh, Fragments of an Anarchist Anthropology, and he provides uh, five basic principles, give like a baseline <laughs> of a, a definition of anarchism, and that's uh, autonomy, voluntary association, self-organization, mutual aid, and direct democracy. Uh, autonomy, voluntary association, self-organization, mutual aid, and direct democracy. And I think that those are uh, pretty, you know, those are some five principles like of anarchism. I think that, you know, social anarchism at least, collective anarchism. Uh, I sort of wanted to speak to your question too. You say how how would uh, in an anarchist society uh, like the minority minority groups be protected? The safety. Of yeah, the safety right. and, and, and the democratic. That, right. Um, I would look to Spain and the CNT where they organized themselves. You know, they organized themselves and, and organized militias for their protection. You know, and, and I'm I'm not saying we go out and start a militia now, but the point is, is we we organize ourselves for protection. You know, and we have that sort of um, like the the reason why, in my opinion, it was so successful is because they had been organizing for years before their revolutionary situation and already had it down such that when the revolutionary situation happened, it went, it, you know, it ain't no thing. You just keep doing what you were doing, you know? So, um, like, my response to that question would be we need to uh, continue to organize ourselves in such a way that we are providing for ourselves, and then when the time comes, we are able to protect ourselves both, you know, economically, socially, and politically. You know? Can I direct? Can I? Um, what... what good I agree with what you just said um, but um, we have to remember that uh, in both anarchists and masses uh, people have to organize themselves somehow we have to organize ourselves to do exactly what we want to do so um, there's no such a thing as things being created or being done by not organ first of all not uh, being organized we have to be organized to achieve um, and like Ed mentioned uh, most people have an idea of communism or uh, socialism because of what they have heard or seen uh, what happened in you know the Soviet Union or the country which it is true that hasn't been communism and it hasn't been socialism. So please, let's be careful when we judge those systems because they haven't been what they're supposed to be, which is from the bottom up organizing people and allowing people to uh, do whatever they want once they organize, whatever is going to please them okay. the most. versus like 
like, you know, Friday for Freedom Party in New York, like, I, you know, like, a communist, um, like, more of, like, a communist tactic, and I, you know, like, that's kind of, like, where I kind of break off from what I, from, um, communism, but, you know, I think it's, at the same time, though, I think the beauty of an energy is that, like, you can coexist with, like, different, um, different types of community, um, so you can have, like, one community that's, you know, um, more focused, like, on the anarcho-syndicalism, like, more focused on the trade union, the anarcho-syndicalism, like, um, focuses specifically on, on the revolution through the trade union, through the organizing trade union, and having that really be, uh, the workers self-organizing being really the force that, um, that pushes the revolution, um, and then, um, there's other, you know, there's, there's again, you know, there's other trades where, like, you know, like, there's still some, uh, I think anarcho-socialism believes that, like, you still get, like, a wage, you still buy, you know, work, you still get, like, you know, compensation for your, for your work, um, versus, like, you know, there's another economy which talks about, like, well, no, you know, you just have, you have more of a gift economy, um, and so I think there's all these different ways of organizing, um, our society that don't necessarily have to be, um, as long as they're all non-oppressive and non-hierarchical, like they don't, they won't, they wouldn't necessarily um, clash into into each other at the end of the day. Because I think people can live like side by side. Um, it's just really, but then it gets back to like how are we going to get there? Because I don't, you know, I don't believe that like building a dictatorship, a dictatorship is a I mean, the reason I think that like it failed is because it's a, it's a tactic that's going to fail. I don't think it's a tactic that's going to work. And so I think we need to rethink that, you know, that tactic and think of something new. I mean, like, again, you could say something about, like, you know, building communes that also fails. So I think, like, also part of, like, you know, having these discussions is, like, you know, let's figure out, like, different tactics on how we can actually get. Because I think we can all agree on, like, I think we can all agree on the basics of, like, what we would, like, see another world. Um, it's really on how to get there that I think is the uh, I was going to add about the, the Marxist and the split, so to speak. If you look at like the historical revolutionary periods in the last hundred years or so, it didn't require anybody to say, hey, hey, left communists and anarchists, you need to work together. They have to start to work together. Spain is a great example where the, they're converting the Partido Obrero, the Socialist Workers Party, the movement is called, um, look for, for comrades in arms with the anarchists on the front line in, like, for example, Valencia. And what, what happened to them, the reason why they failed to defeat fascism by force of arms was simply that the Communist Party, directed by Stalin, actually abandoned them. And so you had the situation where you had the left communists and the anarchists fighting on the front line with outdated weapons with command war. And meanwhile, the Soviet Union is arming the police back in Barcelona, Barcelona so that they can arrest them when they come back from the front. So I think historically, and in the current time, I mean, my the collective that I'm in, the Free Association of Anarchists, we work all the time with the Young Communist League and the Freedom Socialist Party because they're left wing. Communists. We, don't, we, don't, we don't have any major disagreements when it, when it comes to forming a united front against budget cuts or against fascists or police brutality or whatever. It's, it's natural and organic. It's just usually when it's this kind of Stalinistic top-down stuff. And this addresses a question the brother asked earlier about current areas where anarchism is a helpful tool or a helpful means of analyzing things. I think the current labor movement is a perfect example. When you have these Stalinistic Democratic Party attached leadership and they, they backstab the working class and the direct file all the time. It just, it just shows why grassroots, decentralized, horizontal organizing is so important and so necessary. Um, I just wanted to, like, in regards to, like, how anarchism is going to help us move the revolution forward, I, I wanted to just point out that by getting rid of the hierarchies, we're empowering the um, poor working class who would have otherwise had no other source of power within the state system. And um, by allowing like these common men, like houseless members of, of our community, like by empowering them, like you have like you have the um, ability to organize with different people and start food not bombs or like find different ways to like sustain yourselves. I think that's like um, empowering one individual to like say that I can actually do this without the state is like what I think will move the revolution forward and, and, and like the long run because once you once you feel that empowerment like you don't want to go back and say like I have to follow under these you know I have to like live within these like structures that are continually oppressing me like I can find a way to like figure things out for myself and I think that's what's most important about it like the individual empowerment of like I can I can build a community with like other people Let's go where
where the energy is. Do you want to talk? No. You sure? Okay. Um, and I feel like I'm talking too much. Um, but um, several times we had mentioned, we had mentioned the um, dictatorship of the proletariat. And um, I hate to keep, I think we're supposed to be talking about anarchism. I keep, keep bringing it back towards socialism, okay? But we mentioned several times, so I just thought I'd bring this up. That when, when Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto, he never mentioned the dictatorship of the proletariat. And as a matter of fact, it was later on that a, we, we discussed this, in the original copies it was not, it's true that in some of the more recent copies of the capitalist that published this, anyway. Um, <laughs> but just a moment, just a moment. Um, Early on, he and another person was having a discussion, and they were both talking about smashing the capitalist state. And the other person said, when the capitalist state gets smashed, we're going to have to have, the, the army's going to have to create a dictatorship for the proletariat. And it was just Marx answering that, saying, no, we don't need a dictatorship for the proletariat. We need a dictatorship of the proletariat. And then he did go on to, to, to articulate a little bit, saying that in the early stages, that the workers would have to exert some sort of control over the minority. I'm not talking about a racial minority or a, any other kind of minority. I'm talking about the minority of those folks. That the, that the capitalists would want to come back and it would be for the first time. We've never had democracy for the majority. We've always had, all the way back to Greece, we've had democracies for the, a, a small minority of wealth against the majority of people. What Mark was talking about was a dictatorship, and it was a poor choice of words, but he was just answering this other guy. A dictatorship of the masses to make sure that the few didn't rise back up. Exactly. Um, this is a, a very uninteresting subject, but uh, Marx did many, many times after that speak about the dictatorship of the proletariat. He wrote a lot about it in the introduction to the Gotha program in, the, in his letters to his friends. Many, many times he explained why he thought that there should be a dictatorship of the proletariat. But he always did say that it is a brief period of time which would transit the capitalist system or the feudal system to the socialist system. The dictatorship right. over the but I think why we shouldn't uh, talk about it is that uh, I don't know of a single Marxist theoretician today that would advocate the dictatorship of proletariat. Jürgen Habermas, Zizek, David Harvey, Alan Wood. I, I don't know if anybody can name a single Marxist thinker today who think there should be a dictatorship of proletariat. Maybe they know Marx. Well, just to respond to that, though, I think you're right that even academic Marxists, they're not making that argument. Exactly. But in terms of the, the grassroots Marxist parties that are out there, many of them still do have that. Right, but I think the uh, ideas without action and action without ideas really doesn't make sense. And if your ideas are not that well represented or that well read, you're kind of irrelevant. You're talking about that. At the Marxist moment. <laughs> Anybody. Yeah, I just I personally feel that yeah, those academic Marxists are they're useful for literary criticism and cultural critique, but not so much for social subjects. They don't engage in it. Yeah. But I'm not a Marxist and I don't de defend them, but two of these guys that I... Well, actually all of them. They, they go to the working class, they do try to organize, they have in the past, they have been jailed. So real quick, we have two people on stack, um, and then we'll sort of transition into talking about like uh, alternative sort of economies to the capitalist economy. What I'm saying is that how relevant they are, what is the number of their membership, and what have they, uh, what the American Communist Party have achieved in the past hundred years. Stalinist. <laughs>
basically to me sounds like you need, you know, you basically seem to be saying Marx thought that you need to suppress the capitalists after the revolution. And to me, as an anarchist, suppressing capitalists sounds like a very good idea. I never thought I would, uh, I would say this, but I, I, if that's what dictatorship of the proletariat means, I support it completely. Um, and uh, please let, let me know if anybody has, has a critique of the need to suppress capitalists. Um, the, what I do see as the problem with dictatorship of the proletariat is it usually does entail hierarchy. Um, there are often are people who may not be included so well in the proletariat. But Omar, I think you've talked about the suppression of peasants after the Russian Revolution as part of the dictatorship of the proletariat. So um, I think there are problems still. I thought that I thought there were other people that needed to speak. agree with what you said as long as we keep time of and also as long as we allow everyone not just one person but everyone to speak up yes i agree with we can open it up if you want but please allow everyone to speak up
space all over the globe, free food for anybody. That's that. That's the way you pretty much transcend all of the false economic barriers of the past couple hundred years. When you make them, we do we use them. Hi, I'm Kenny. Um, I I'm not yet a self-identified anarchist because I don't feel um, labeling myself as such is going to really really mean anything without doing anything. You know, I, I believe that like when it comes to At least, can you say your name louder so that we can yeah, hear uh, it? When? When? Thank you. And you're a pitch what you just said because you are my enemy. Let me hear you. <laughs> what did you just say? I, I, I said I'm very aware of communists because in most revolutions, you know, communists have betrayed the anarchists. You know, they did the Russian Revolution, they did in Spain. And so my anarchist mentors have always said that they're the ones who really need to be watching most, mostly. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I think anarchism only just feeds into a new school. Uh, I'm also named Matt, I'm also a teacher, uh, anarchist or free, free association of anarchists. Uh, I call myself a uh, anarcho, anarcho uh, syndicalist, I like unions, uh, and I like syndicates even better, and uh, communist because I think sharing is good, not because I'm a Communist, 
he used the word communist the same way as anarchist used the word anarchist, a completely stateless, organizationalist society where people do, where, where the, the structure of society itself goes ahead and takes care of things. I'm Omar from the Free Association of Anarchists, my comrade Matt over there. Um, I'm also a teacher. And uh, yeah, Matt, as you said, is a basically syndicalist, anarcho syndicalist, anarcho communist in orientation, but, but we also we're open to other forms of anarchism as well. Just not capitalism or the state. State capitalism. Yeah. Especially not state capitalism. My name is Tuck, I'm an occupier. That's my principal identification okay. here. Because I think occupyism is needed to get. Uh, Anything done uh, in a system that's totally paralyzed. Uh, I have no affiliation with political parties. I would say I'm a, a pragmatist, willing to try anything, and I'm very suspicious of hierarchies, uh, of conceptual hierarchies, which I'm feeling I'm being treated to quite a bit here today. Uh, I think. Uh, the, the, path ahead is right here in the circle. I think the experiments that we're doing here uh, are much more potent and much more important than anything else we're talking about. And that requires that each of us develop our voice so that we can hear each other, both figuratively, figuratively and literally. Uh, and I'm hoping to do that within this, within this neighborhood. <clears throat> um, my name is Andres. Uh, I am. Uh, I work with kids, so I guess I'm an I'm an educator. Uh, I'm also a student. Uh, I occasionally associate myself with comrades of the FA. Um, but some of the things I do, I guess I want to advance anarchism more through uh, the field of psychology. Cause that's what I'm studying. I want to be a marriage family therapist, psychologist, and I think it's very important to look at anarchism through a perspective of psychology. I think we will have a lot more understanding of anarchism, how it could work, uh, the possibilities. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do. Uh, my name is Hector, and uh, well, you can label me only one way, which is I am anti-capitalist and anti-imperialist, and I'm an occupier. Now, I've been influenced by reading Lenin, Marx, and Trotsky, I've been influenced by that writing, by the reading that I've done. Um, I have read many others, and they have influenced me too, like W.P. Du Bois, or Du Bois, what they call it. But um, I'm an occupier, and I am, I am an anti-imperialist and capitalist. Hi, I'm Patty. I don't really know. Uh, I don't know anything about any of this. I just came to learn. <laughs> you should, well, you're recording her. Very good. Yes, thank you. Good. All right, uh, I'm going to record him. My name is Puyan. Uh, uh -oh. I what usually happened? don't find it useful to identify or label myself with any type of ideology. But in Occupy, usually people want to know what uh, your label is, so the one that I feel most comfortable with is anarcho syndicalism. Can those of us in the sun at least move a little? So that, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to move more than a little bit. You're going to have to move more than a little bit. You're going to have to move more than a little bit. You're going to have to move more than a little bit. You're going to have to move more than a little bit. You're going to have to move more than a little bit. You're going to have to move more than a little bit. You're going to have to move more than a Where's Anthony? Just, Where's Anthony? You see here? next to you speaking because I keep filming you. <laughs> they don't watch it that much, boy. <laughs> it's not HD. <laughs> no, the other one is. This one.
two different things to hold it and I still haven't received them. This has been for me an interesting life. <laughs> we are looking at a guy who traveled extensively in the East Bloc. Russia, Bulgaria, when they were part of the Soviet Union. I was a guest of the government of those countries. Because I was in the hierarchy of the labor movement in my home country, Nigeria. Maybe this is the first time I'm saying it publicly. Alex, sit down. <laughs> I said this is the maybe the first time I'm saying this publicly. Because I'm inspired by the Carolines, Emma, the Goldman, Eddie and the rest of them to say this publicly. That you are looking at somebody who traveled extensively in the old East Block when it was under the Soviet Union. Oh, and I'm sure that to tell you where I came from. To be invited by communist regimes to come and visit because of my hierarchy in the labor union of my home country. That was how far I was going. My name is Dele. But I also want to say that the Occupy movement will not be where it is today but for anarchists. My friends on the left don't like me saying that, but that is the truth. That sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and say, are you now an anarchist lover? Yes, you are. That I want to say that I am an unregistered member of the 10th tribe. Because of some of these reasons, autonomous action that people have the ability to collectivize themselves and go out to do autonomous action to so a sense of freedom and liberation that anarchism is. Because like our sister said, you know, the houseless members of this community would not have been able to walk into a meeting of the Communist Party the way they walked into our meeting. These are some of the truths. They want me to say it directly, they, could, they will not be able to work directly into an ISO meeting just like that without some introduction. So please let me just say what I'm saying. <laughs> I know ISO, FSP, I, I have dealt globally with communist organizations, not just in America. I don't like saying it, but that is the truth. You know, they will not have been able to work just like that into a meeting of the labor union in Nigeria without some questions. They will be allowed to come in, but not the way they come in freely here. Although between us, there seems to be some common areas. Food security, sustainability of the environment, anti-capitalism. And I think on those three grounds, we must find a way where we can collaborate. My brother here is one such example. I have I know him from the Freedom Socialist Party. He's a good friend. And that is a group that believes, maybe to some extent, in the dictatorship of the proletariat. Yes, it is true. Where the young man who says so, he says everywhere. You are not lying. You are correct about this. And I don't know why Ed wants to run away from it. That our people, in our various political parties, still push the dictatorship of the proletariat. They still do. When I finish my when I finish my introduction, then you can speak. So the the, the you, I said most of the organized leftist political parties in America and elsewhere still push the idea of the dictatorship of the proletariat. They still do. I don't know whether I so does, but most of the parties do. So our young comrade here is very very correct about what he says. But today. When you look at one of the areas of what I consider the premium crisis that we are facing, the environment, sustainability of the environment, I think the anarchist model for me, in terms of lesser consumerism, respect for the environment, and all of that, is an area that I'm very, very willing to explore if we are going to save the planet and in order to save ourselves. I don't think there's any other way. And so, if you want to describe me as, as a communist who is very, very much in tune with the anarchist part of me, you are free to define me the way you want to define me. Thank you, darling. Um, I'm actually a 
Hmm? I'm a gold, like I'm a gold medal without a man. I have from here over. I can see you. I perceive anarchy as more of a philosophy oh, okay. as a way of life than a
want to do instead of what they have to do in order to survive. This creates an economy that transcends communism, socialism, and capitalism. To the world. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, world. Revolution. That's it. <laughs> Speak up, please. Uh, the, uh, the abundance that you take for granted yes, yes. based off of other people's labor in other parts of the world. 
So what I'm saying is, is if we would first need to renationalize all of our labor, which would be an expensive project and it would take uh, a lot of labor to do it. But products and goods are made in other countries. Are there any more cops or just one? Take that good. Two more over there. What are they doing? because we're having hard time hearing. Point out that Thank you. A lot of the uh, substructure that is keeping our planet kind of coordinated is in the financial world and that wealth and the holding of wealth is very problematic. So in the gift economy there would be some way of reducing that wealth and distributing it back to everybody. The other is I've worked in a manufacturing Yeah. 
conceptual level of organization, there's a technical level of organization, and there is a physical level of organization. Either we internalize all those ourselves, or we find that people gravitate naturally to those different uh, strata of occupation, and the thing is to just not value them differentially. So that's uh, kind of the Iroquois idea, where we are so connected to each other, that it doesn't occur that uh, this should be valued more highly than that, that that's this one. This person can do best, and so they should be doing that best. There will be differentiation whenever you have organization.